morning to hymn number 376. It will be on your screen.
squares, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel, and despised all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 19. We'll read it in unison. It's in your insert. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another, although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then I shall be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. <clears throat> A reading from the letter of James. <clears throat> Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity, it stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, 
a reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. By turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Yesterday was the 20th anniversary of the horrific events of 9-11. I think we can all remember the many stories of folks who risked their lives and some gave their lives in order to save the lives of others. We call them heroes. We honor them and remember them as persons of valor. During this time, we just don't think about our military brothers and sisters, but of the police, the firemen, the first responders, and the many who risked their lives to help and save the lives of others. This is how we identify Jesus, our personal Savior, who gave his life for our souls. This passage in Mark's gospel is a transition in Jesus' ministry. He begins to focus on Jerusalem and coming in his coming uh, crucifixion. But also, it helps us to understand that Jesus isn't just a human hero who gave his life for his friends. It's a passage that foreshadows the climatic statement at the end of Mark's gospel by that centurion who's in charge of our Lord's crucifixion. You know, observing the manner in which Jesus died, we finally hear the words from the officer's lips. Truly, this man was God's son. 
The Jews were expecting a Messiah who would exercise God's rule over God's people. But Jesus wasn't the conquering hero that the Jews were expecting. Rather, he was the suffering servant. You know, the, the last prophet in the Old Testament, Malachi, prophesied 300 years before Jesus was born and said, see, I will send my messenger who will prepare the world the way before, before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. Now Peter recognized Jesus as the Messiah, the one who was sent by God, but he recognized more. Jesus wasn't just human, but he was also divine. And for a Jew like Peter, this was a big change in the way he was thinking, to call Jesus the Son of God. Now, the Messiah was understood to be a descendant of David, a human king who would be anointed, perhaps with oil, and certainly with the Holy Spirit, to regain rule over Israel and restore Israel as a people. This was perhaps the earliest designation with which believers understood the true mission of Jesus. Both the Jewish and the Christian's faith conflicted with the Roman uh, authorities. Emperor worship was expected as loyalty to their rule, and their faith didn't allow worship of someone who was simply human, the Roman emperor. Now, we can see why being called the Messiah, Jesus wasn't too enthused about being identified with that title. You know, Jesus saw his mission not in terms of a conquering hero, but who would rally the people and regain control of their land and reestablish Israel as a sovereign nation. The kingdom that Jesus came to establish wasn't an earthly human kingdom, but a kingdom grounded in a living relationship with God. Mark writes that Jesus sternly told his disciples not to tell anyone else that they had come to what they had come to realize and understand about him that Jesus was the Messiah. Then he began to teach them that the son of man won't ascend to David's throne. Instead, he will suffer and be killed, and after three days, rise again. And Jesus taught that being great in God's kingdom means self-denial, sacrificial service. And these values are opposite of what the world expects today. You know, in today's world, people uh, need to see that sacrificial living leads to fulfillment and real life. We need to make good sense and use of the opportunities that Christ sends us. God wants to be an active presence in our lives. Jesus said, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. So in practical terms, Taking up our cross by choice and following Jesus' footsteps means a daily choice to love those who are hard to love, forgiving those who treat us badly, choosing to use our resources and our time serving others instead of serving ourselves, and remaining determined to see it through those things that God asks us to do and remain faithfully loyal to his plans that he has for us, regardless of any cost, whether it be financial or um, publicly. You know, using me as an example, 
my back problems are not a cross, you know, that I have to bear. It's a frustrating condition, but it's not a cross. The reason that it's not a cross is because it's not voluntary. Jesus could have avoided the cross, but he chose to walk the path of obedience to his heavenly Father, and he says, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So when Jesus says those who give up their lives for the sake of Christ and the gospel will find eternal life, this concept was very evident to the readers of Mark's gospel because they faced daily persecution and conflict. They saw this as a challenge that needed to be faithful. We have that same challenge today. The world is hateful to both Christians and the good news of the gospel. Christians are suffering in, mod in the modern equivalent of stoning and worse in the world today. Most often in Africa, in the face of the Islamic persecutors seeking to impose their religious faith by the point of whips, swords, and guns. Christians today are dying by weapons wielded by the cruel hands of Islamic jihadists. Those weapons are attacking Christians because of their faith. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, in Africa, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and other areas of the world. That's why every Sunday we pray for persecuted Christians everywhere. Now understand that sacrifice doesn't really um, mean that we have to die. You know, Jesus isn't necessarily saying and referring to our physical life here, although that might be included, but he's referring to our inner life. As we see from his next words, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? It means doing tasks such as giving food to a hungry person or a cup of cold water to someone that's thirsty, deeply caring for others, and even using our own personal time in the service of our church. You know, while stationed in Germany, Meg and I had an opportunity to visit a very unique event. For nearly 300 years, the people of Ober Ammergau in Bavaria, Germany, put on a passion play depicting the events of the last week of Christ's life. Now, they began the performances after the village was spared from the bubonic plague in the 1600s. Now, I read about an American visitor watching the drama unfold, and he sprang into action when the actor portraying Jesus fell while carrying the cross towards the crucifixion scene. The tourist was all caught up in the emotion of that moment and wanted to lift the cross from Jesus' back. Now, expecting it to be a prop, he reached down with one hand and found that he couldn't move that heavy wooden cross. After the play was over, he met with the actor and told him, I found that, you know, I couldn't lift that cross. And the actor said, I can't look like, cross, like Christ without carrying a real cross. So in another sense, this is true of every one of us. There's no light, no light crosses for the Christian who wishes to truly follow Jesus. The cross is more than just a symbol of Christianity. It's a literal expression what Jesus demands of those who would follow in his steps. 
There's no successful model for part-time Christianity. Though there are a lot of part-time Christians, their refusal to pick up the cross limits their ability to follow Jesus. But the good news is that even though our discipleship and Christian faith requires us to pick up our cross to follow Jesus, the storms, the trials, the heartaches, you know, the disappointments are all part of the process. God is stretching us, growing us, and building us into his kingdom. Amen. stand as we affirm our faith through the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. We'll be using Form 3 for prayers of the people found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for our saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. We pray for the unity of the Anglican Communion and the Episcopal Church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Tanzania. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for St. Matthew's Kennedy and St. Stephen's Goliad. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, our bishops David and Rayford, our priest Dexter, our diocesan seminarians, our President Joe, and our Governor Greg. We especially pray for strength and healing for O.T., Allison, Ty, Clark, Sandra, Robert, Galena, Roberta, Roy, Lillian, David, Linda, Barbara, Gary, Angela, Edie, John, Diana, Tom, 
Joyce, Karen, Pat. We pray for our military at home and abroad, but especially for Haley, Nathan. And we pray for persecuted Christians everywhere. We pray for our outreach ministries, Divine Food Pantry, Divine Hospice, Hank, Southwest Family Life Center, Military Ministry, Mission Divine, and Project Mend. And let's take a moment so you can add your own prayers and intercessions. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in thy Son's name, we beseech thee mercifully to incline their ear to us, how have now made our prayers and supplications unto thee, and grant that those things which we have asked faithfully according to thy will may be obtained effectively to relief of our necessity and to the setting forth of thy glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everybody. It's nice seeing everyone. I know we, uh, this morning we want, you know, extra special prayers when you're at home for, for Robert and for OT. Um, today I'd like to uh, welcome um, Folks that are watching, we have Marguerite in Rhode Island. We have um, S Susan Edwards. We have Pat in New York and Robert and Sandra. So welcome. And I know those of you that will be watching this service a little bit later or even on the next couple days. October is going to be a very busy month for St. Matthias. Um, the highlight, well, depending on how you look at it, um, the, the first, like the first Wednesday in October, it's around the 5th or 6th, we are doing a community blessing of the animals in the parking lot, just like with our trunk or treat where they're going to drive by. And then we are going to have a murder mystery. And we have our team that's uh, working on it, sounds really amazing are all invited. We'll get out more details, but it's going to be on, all, everyone here is invited, even as me if she wants to. You know, and, um, but it's going to be on a Saturday. Um, you know, it's probably start late afternoon. And it's going to go for, for a few hours, but it'll be our first attempt, and uh, we're even trying to figure out for our, the one we do later on how we can include some of our folks that are in our community of faith watching online. Maybe walk around with a, a laptop so they, they can see what's going on. So and then also we are going to have a military ministry listening session for divine and surrounding areas in our parish hall. And oh, and then on um, the October 31st, we are having our annual trunk or treat in the parking lot. And uh, it was a big success last year, and parents with tears in their eyes said if it wasn't for us, their kids wouldn't be getting anything. 
So we have um, our team working on getting everything all ready for that. But if you'd like to help, if you want to, just like we've done in the past with Easter, if you want to maybe donate some candy, just have to put it on the back pew, and it'll be greatly used. Um, please keep also in your prayer um, Meg and Erica, who are physically traveling to Colorado, and they'll be there a few days, then coming back on Thursday. So we just hope they have a, a safe trip. In the back, even though Meg isn't here today, she made like coffee, cake, cinnamon, and yummy stuff cupcakes that's in the back. So um, I, I had to, sp I smelled it yesterday and I didn't try one, so I can't really tell you what's in there, but it's back. So you can, you're welcome to have one. Uh, Rob, am I missing anything? Okay, perfect. Okay. So a walk in love is Christ loved us and gave of himself in offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn is hymn number uh, 336. News on page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. 
Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with a spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Our closing hymn is hymn number, it's in your insert, your insert. Descending, bring from above, makers of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all that they know. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Esme, you want to put the candles out?